I'm watching um, Michael Phelps, who's become, become kind of the poster boy for uh, mental health and Olympic athletes, uh, famously publicly acknowledging his own struggles with depression and suicide. I was watching him on NBC the day that uh, Simone withdrew, and he was giving her credit. And it was, for me, I posted on Facebook uh, my observation, which was that it was the most inspiring thing that I've seen come out of the Tokyo Olympics. And I think that what I saw, what we saw with Simone withdrawing is we saw this woman move from being um, an elite, world-renowned athlete to becoming a true international superstar champion for all of those people in the world, one in four people in the world who struggle with depression um, and other mental health issues. And I salute her. So I posted on Facebook and wouldn't you know, <laughs> the ravers and the haters came out and you said- You got hammered, didn't you? What? I got hammered. Quitters got hammered. never I did win. Too. I put up the same yeah, I thing. I put up the same thing and I fr quite frankly could not believe where people were going. She's a coward. She's gutless. Um, she's a quitter. And I went through the ceiling because, as I said, most of the people who were calling Simone Biles a quitter couldn't last 60 seconds on the pickleball court. And none of them have ever been right. involved in any sort of an actual an actual event, if you will, an actual sporting event where they would absolutely know anything about what it is like to be competitive. I'll, you know, I look, I'll I'll bring this up to here, because when it comes to being competitive, Jilly knows what it's like because when you're there as as a performer, you're competitive. You're out there. You gotta you gotta be on your game every single second. It's just like being an athlete more than anything else. And yeah, every now and then, guess what? You have a bad moment. You have a bad time. Things happen. You screw up. You come back. You do it again. But hey, Jilly, I I think this whole attack about Simone Biles is again indicative of this country. It's like an F you if you haven't made me feel good about the fact that I rooted for you and you're supposed to be the best of all time. And you decided to walk away. Who cares? I mean, she, she, she did the right thing because there's a thing in gymnastics called the twisties that most people don't think about. And if you've ever covered gymnastics or know about gymnastics itself, when you are part of the event and you're in the air, if you all of a sudden don't know where you are, you're twisted, your, your, your sight line is twisted, and it becomes mental. If you don't know where to land, you could kill yourself. I mean, it's, it's, it's very possible. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, Jilly, I think what we're looking at here is people are just looking for a reason to hate somebody, and I'm, sometimes I wonder if there's a lot of racism involved here, too. If she was a white athlete, if people would let her, go, would let her fly. You know, I think she did the right thing because look, look what happens when you let it go too far. You get Tanya Harding. <laughs> so she she saved, you know, another gymnast from, you know, she might have gone off and, you know, hit someone in the knee with a bag. I don't know. But no, I, I on a serious note, it's um, mental health is above and beyond the most important thing we can take care of. A lot of comedians struggle with it. You know, I've struggled with it personally and no one should ever be shamed for saying, I, I, I just can't and, and being brave enough to admit that's why. Well, isn't that, isn't that sort of endemic though of what this society is about? Because for people who don't agree with how someone is conducting their life, it's a shaming issue in this country where people just, and again, I call it the, it's the textual cowards. You can hide behind Facebook. You can hide behind Twitter. You can change your voice on a YouTube channel or a Vimeo channel. And all of a sudden you're the bravest son of a bitch in the world because you don't have anybody to, oh, but they don't really know who I am because it's that bravery of hate and, and the cowardice of, of hate, if you will. I mean, look, you know, as well as I do, when it comes to social media, you go out and I go out and have a bad show. Somebody hammers you in a second. You go and have a bad show. Somebody's all over you just because they can. I, I was in a, a music video and I didn't even know what World Star was. Those comments were very humbling. <laughs> yeah. And World Star, I think, isn't that one of those just a, I, I think that's just a site or something that picks up videos and, and uses them as comedy? I mean, or, or dark comedy? No, they're, they're more like hip hop video. Maybe I'm saying oh, okay. it wrong. Yeah. And, um, they, they tore me apart 
And I was just supposed to be the older woman love interest and, you know, a cougar in this video. But he's like, who, who brought the grandma on, you know, and, and, and such. So <laughs> it's so much, so much awesome. easier to be a critic than it is to actually do the work sure. or to be or praise. Um, I think that that's the truth. I also think that in the last four or five years, I'm not blaming anyone in particular, but I think that kind of the ugly underbelly of America has been revealed, uh, where once people might be ashamed to reveal their lack of compassion, they're now we're proudly wearing that shit on their sleeve. There you That's go. why they go after Simone Biles. So, you know, my question is, well, where's the compassion? You know, where, where, have we lost something as a country? Am I being overly dramatic? Well, but wait a minute, hang on. When, when you say we lost our compassion, compassion, it's not like, Look, losing compassion doesn't happen overnight. It's not like all of a sudden somebody turned a switch, although we can say that the switch was turned when somebody walked down a set of stairs in New York City one day. But it, it, look, this lack of compassion, Ellis, come yeah. to you on this, this lack of compassion isn't just all of a sudden momentary. No, I mean, no, this, has been, this has been ingrained in us for decades now. It's just we've had the right, the right jerks to come up here and, and make it mainstream. Listen, you know, I grew up in Louisiana in the 1960s and 70s. Believe me, lack of compassion is not something that was just been invented lately. Here's what's here's what's different, though. I mean, I think you're right about the um, about the social media piece of it. You know, there is a you know an aspect of it that the social media allows people to be anonymous and to be uh, hide behind things. But I'll tell you. The tribal stuff is just as much a piece. I mean, people just identify so strongly with whatever their political team is that they turn over the thinking to other people and they aren't taking responsibility. And I think that applies to the COVID stuff. It applies to the uh, to the Olympic yeah. stuff. And uh, listen, I love people talking about their mental health. That's a that's a big step forward. Well, see, that's the next thing that I think we need to discuss, too, because what I read is in all these people who are hammering away at Simone Biles and Naomi Osaka and others, they don't understand either they don't understand or they don't want to understand the fact that, quite frankly, I think this country is awash in, 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 in mental health debilitation right now more than anything else. I think that you've probably got if you were able to have a, have a light on somebody's head if they're having mental health issues. And it's not that there's a big difference between suffering from mental health and having mental health issues. I mean, there's, I think, Nick, you might even be, there's a, there's a little break in there because you can be ill from a mental health condition, but then you can have mental health issues which are bothering you, which are depression and anger and all these other things. I mean, look, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. I just play one on TV. But it would seem to me as if we're living in a society right now that is just buried in mental health issues. Everybody's got them. It's just a matter of the, the level that you have them at. And that how you can deal with them. Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. And it's, I mean, yeah, the you're, best not, you're, not, you're not too sure. Is, no, I mean, the best thing we can do is talk about it. You know, I mean, what was so bad before is that you had to hide it. Um, yes, of course, we all have that stuff. And it's, uh, it's better if we can kind of be, you know, be open about it. I, I guess maybe it started with Woody Allen saying, I go to a shrink. But now, you know, everybody pretty much is willing to talk about that. I don't think I don't think people's careers are hurt if they say I suffer from depression. Do you? That, that's a good thing. Well, see, I think I think they are. I, I still do. Really? Because, yes, I believe if a celebrity comes out or a minor celebrity comes out and says they are suffering from depression, you will have some people who will say, well, good for you. I'm glad okay. you brought it out into the open. But then there are others who will come to the coward, quitter. What's wrong with you? What's your problem? Gee, you're so rich. You've got all this money in the world. How can you be mentally depressed? You got a brand new car. You've got a big family. I think that's what happens. It becomes an attack factor, which I think is part of a jealousy factor in so many ways.